Are axes underrated? Short answer, abso frickin -lutely. How underrated, and this is the long answer, I'm gonna tell you right after showing you something cool that today's sponsor sent me. This is the Vig VCR pendant from Viking Jewelry. Some really nice detail on that. And this is made of stainless steel, so it's more durable than silver. Here we've got a little wax sealed message. Let's see what it says. Looks like it's a coupon code for you guys for quite a massive discount on these. And there's also a discount code for anything else in the store. So if you prefer something else, you can use the second code, which is valid for 10 days after the video is published. So thank you, Viking Jewelry. I very much like how this looks. And if you're interested in it, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. All right, so there's a staggering variety of axes from all parts of the world, all time periods, all sorts of shapes and sizes, etc. And uh, by the way, don't let anybody tell you that a tomahawk or a hatchet is not an axe. Axe is the general term. It applies to everything. Axes have been with us for a very, very long time. In the Bronze Age, you have some really interesting, unusual forms. Like, for example, this fantasy-looking Luristan bronze axe. You have this impressively large Epsilon axe from ancient Egypt, around 4,000 years old, and so many others. Some specific subtypes with their own names, uh, different sizes, thicknesses, shapes, etc. You've, you've got so many axes. So it's a quite a large topic that I can really only touch on. But I want to talk a little bit about the specifics of axes compared to other weapons, swords in particular, because the sword usually takes precedent in people's mind. The sword is the bigger status symbol between them, even though axes were sometimes status symbols as well, and there are some highly decorated, elaborate versions. But usually the sword tends to steal the show, justifiably, well, to an extent, maybe. The axe tends to be more of an unsung hero, except when it comes to Vikings. Then it takes center stage. Most people, when they think Viking, they think axe. One story illustrates that particularly well, that of a single Norwegian warrior with a two-handed axe who supposedly held the bridge at Stamford all by himself against Harold's English army until somebody floated underneath the bridge and stabbed him from below with a spear. Now, when comparing sources, this seems more like a case of heroic storytelling, which was often done, of course. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more, I'll uh, link the article down below in the video description. But if you look at the Battle of Hastings, axes played a pretty significant role, but not in the hands of Vikings, but in the hands of the English. You probably know about the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Who doesn't? So English infantrymen held a hill and inflicted significant casualties on the Norman cavalry with their axes. And William ended up using trickery to draw them out of that strong position by faking two retreats and then turning around and attacking them when the, the English infantry came rushing down the hill. So yeah, these are no joke. Definitely an intimidating weapon to face but not the brutish heavy clunker that some people seem to think. You know, the way it's often portrayed in fantasy games where axes are not only gigantic, but also thick. I mean, this is a large axe hat, obviously, but it is very, very thin. So this thing does not weigh much at all, especially when used with two hands. It is very, very easy to maneuver it. So the usual comparison between sword and axe is the, the, the sword is the more agile, nimble weapon. Weight measurements are a little difficult to come by. Not many museums show detailed specs, and when they do, it tends to be length more often than weight. But if we look at specific examples, here is a battle axe from around the 1200s, which weighs only 793 grams. That's really not a whole lot. Then we've got a Syrian axe here from the late 15th century. That one weighs 1.34 kilograms. Then there is one made entirely of steel, which only weighs 40 grams more. Here's an Iranian saddle axe weighing in at only 751 grams. And a reproduction axe made by Albion right here weighs a pound or a bit under half a kilogram. Even this gigantic looking crescent axe weighs only 1.36 kilograms, which is still within the range of single-handed swords. Now, of course, axes could also be pretty hefty, like the Swiss axe here weighing 
five five kilograms but it also is two meters long so this is really more of a pole arm and uh, pole arms are a separate category for good reason so i'm mainly talking about uh, shorter two-handed axes and single-handed axes although you could look at the stain axe here as a pole arm i just tend to make the distinction because pole arms are usually longer and heavier so battle axes were generally not as heavy as you may think. Part of the reason is because they tended to be either thinner than tool axes or smaller otherwise. Something like this right here is a relatively thick axe head, but you can see how small it is. So this one is very light. This is a mere 600 something grams. So this one here is extremely maneuverable, but it can be misleading if you look at just the weight because these two right here, the Swedish axe and this German Messer, weigh essentially the same. They're both between 920 and 930 grams. But I can tell you, handling these is way different because an axe is basically a reverse sword. Think about it, most of the weight in the sword is in the hilt. The blade tends to taper quite often in thickness sometimes in profile as well and you just have more steel right here in the form of the guard the pommel etc this is the exact opposite so if i were to flip this around now it feels more similar to this you can very easily move this around in all kinds of ways and quickly change direction you can stop and redirect it quickly with this axe i can do that too i can also stop it and redirect but it takes more effort because there's just more momentum to deal with uh, if you think of holding a dumbbell if you hold a dumbbell right here super easy right if you move it out with an outstretched arm and hold it now you're not going to be able to hold it as long it's much heavier simply because of the leverage the, the longer the lever is the harder you have to work to keep the weight up so now if you take a stick and tie the dumbbell to the end and try to hold it out you see the problem with a particularly light axe like this it's really not an issue you can very easily move this around it also has to do of course with the handle length the shorter the handle the shorter the lever and uh, the easier it is so if you the more you choke up the easier it is but of course even so if this was a sword with the weight distribution reversed yeah you can imagine so at comparable weight, an axe is not going to be quite as lively and quick as a sword may be, and it's going to take more energy, more effort, basically. But, of course, it also depends on exactly what you're doing. There's a difference between, for example, a full-powered committed swing like this, where I rotate the entire body into it with extended arms, make everything like a nice, rigid, connected structure, or if I do this. You know, this is going to be quicker and easier. It's not going to be as devastating, of course, as, as a committed cut like this, but there are ways to increase the speed by sacrificing some power. And this is where axes really shine. Raw destructive power, basically. They hit way harder than a sword. I've done quite a number of blade tests at this point, and every time it's just astonishing how much easier it is to accomplish the same thing with an axe compared to a sword. Now, especially against the zombie analog heads, it takes quite a bit of effort to really cut deeply into them or even through them, hack them apart, etc. with most swords. The axe will do the same thing easily. And that's worth keeping in mind, even though I said just earlier that the axe takes more effort to use compared to the sword, at least at the same speed, it, actually transfers the energy you put into it more effectively. So you don't have to hit as hard. You don't need to put quite as much muscle power into it to achieve the same thing. But if you do, of course, it's going to be even more devastating, especially if you have a design like the Igorot Axe, which was used as a tool, but also to take heads from enemy warriors. 
This one is particularly devastating because not only do you have the, the sharp edge to work with, you also have the point facing forward and the point will concentrate even more force on a smaller surface area. When looking at the Chinese dagger axe or ge, I would also imagine a similar effect to that of an Igorot axe. So in terms of destructive power, my money is always on the axe. Versatility, not as much. There are definitely more things you can do with a sword depending on the type of sword, of course, but typically you have a very effective thrust. Now you can thrust with a lot of axes, like in this case here, we have the points or horns. Yeah, you can certainly thrust with that, even more so with this. It's just not going to penetrate as far as a sword. But even though there's a much greater variety of techniques with a sword, we also have to keep in mind that for one, the historical manuscripts cover swords much more. Some of them do cover halberds and pole axes, but not so much shorter two-handed axes, with the exception of Paulus Hector Meyer, but no single-handed axes, as far as I'm aware, are in the manuscripts. So we, there may be a lot we don't know about the use that simply wasn't recorded. So it might have been more complex and more technical, or it may also have been simpler. You just hit them with your ax, while of course keeping in mind the fundamental basics of fighting distance, timing, etc., etc. But there's still a number of things you can do with these. For one, you can place your hands usually anywhere on the haft. Uh, depends, some horsemen's axes tend to have a dedicated grip area and a, a steel half, but with this you can choke up to use it at a closer distance, you can grapple with the haft, etc. Another interesting thing with two-handed axes, when using a sword with two hands, you want the more dexterous main hand to be on top, close to the hilt for fine manipulation. With an axe, that's not necessary. You can power it with this hand and benefit from the greater leverage and thereby deliver a very powerful swing. And you can deliver it from your left side to your opponent's right side, no less, where they hold their weapon rather than the shield. Finally, there is the issue of durability. Now, everything can break, of course. Uh, swords could and did break or bend or otherwise be rendered unusable. Same is true for axes, but potentially more so because if you have a wooden haft, it can be damaged quite severely from cutting into it. It can just break more easily with use. So that can be a problem and you sometimes see solutions for that. For example, here's a 17th century Norwegian ax that is wrapped in, with an iron band and wrapped axes are also mentioned in the Old Norse saga. So that would be a way to strengthen it and make it less likely to be damaged and break. Of course, it also adds some weight. And there are a number of other reinforcements like this Spanish horseman's ax here, for example, from 1500 to 1533, has a brass langets on top of an oak haft. With this German horseman's ax, they went even further and covered the entire handle in brass. There's also speculation about using rawhide or leather or other organic materials to wrap the handle and make it more durable, which, would be hard to find evidence for because organic materials don't preserve very well. We're lucky enough to find the occasional wooden haft, at least partially intact or even fully sometimes. So covers like that, if they were used, wouldn't normally survive in the archeological record. As always, there are pros and cons. At some things, swords are better. At some things, axes are better. But overall, I think they deserve a little more appreciation. So hopefully this helped a little bit in that regard. And I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.